In 2006, Konami released another sequel to an older game, this time following up on Vampire Killer, which, as you remember, is somewhat of a sequel to the novel Draculia. The game was Devil's Castle Draculia, Gallery of Labyrinth. Okay? This one was released on the DS and featured an innovative system where you control two characters at the same time and a variety of different modes to play. And for those of you who are getting bored with the Metroid-style games being only in the castle, the gallery feature lets you visit a variety of locales. The default duo is Jonathan Morris and Charlotte Owlin. Jonathan is John Morris's son, presumably named after his grandfather's friend Jonathan Harker. Charlotte Owlin is his best friend and sister figure and appears to be related to the Fernandez clan of witches. In the game, Castlevania is taken over by a new vampire named Browner and his daughters Loretta and Stella. They've sealed away Draculia, and as there are currently no Belmondo warriors, it's up to the Morris family to take care of things again. This one had a really good story and wraps up a lot of the things from Draculia and Vampire Killer, and it's extremely replayable due to the alternate modes. You could play through the game as the two vampire sisters, or as Richter Belmondo and Maria Lenard. There's also a solo mission as a female axe armor. For its localization in America, the game is called Castlevania Portrait of Ruin. 2007 was sort of a quiet year for the series, though there were two releases. The first, Castlevania Order of Shadows, was released for mobile phones. As far as I know, it was only released in America, and is the only one not available in Japan, which I find ironic, as mobile games are much more popular in Japan. The game features Desmond Belmont and is not considered to be a part of the series' canon. The second game was a remake of Devil's Castle Draculia X Rondo of Blood, entitled Devil's Castle Draculia X Chronicle for the PlayStation Portable. The game is essentially the same, just with new graphics and sounds. It allows you to unlock the original version of the game, as well as the sequel, Devil's Castle Draculia X Nocturne in the Moonlight, though that one is somewhat of a compromise between the PlayStation and Saturn versions. For its localization, it was renamed Castlevania The Draculia X Chronicles. 2008 saw the release of another two games, and they couldn't be more different. The first game was the third and so far latest DS entry, Devil's Castle Draculia The Stolen Seal. The game takes place after Nocturne in the Moonlight, presumably around the same time as Circle of the Moon. In the game, there are no Belmondo warriors, so many others have attempted to come up with alternate ways of countering Draculia. One of these is the Order of Ecclesia, led by Barlow, who uses a process called glyphs to use magic. The protagonist, Shanoa, is a woman whose memory and emotions have been erased and must retrieve three powerful glyphs from a rogue order member, Albus. Along the way, she interacts with villagers, travels the countryside, and eventually confronts Draculia. The game also has an alternate mode where you can play as Albus. It's considered the hardest and arguably best of the DS games, and it's up there as one of my favorites. For its localization, the game was renamed Castlevania Order of Ecclesia. The game shares a lot of similarities to Draculia II The Cursed Seal, even having a similar title and numerous references to it. Also in 2008, Konami released Devil's Castle Draculia Judgment for the Wii. This is a 3D fighting game in the style of Power Stone, which involves time travel to bring many characters from the timeline together. The characters' individual storylines flesh out their own stories, and in some cases they're taken from different points in time. For example, Ralph C. Belmondo has already destroyed Draculia, but Saifa Fernandez hasn't met him yet. The game got cripplingly bad reviews from a lot of sources, though some, like IGN, have said that it's an above-average game, which I agree with. The game introduced a new villain, the Time Reaper, who is attempting to destroy Draculia. The game has various different control schemes, as is typical for Wii games. It was localized as Castlevania Judgment. Also in 2009, 
just barely the very end of December, Konami released their first downloadable game in the series, The Legend of Draculia Rebirth for WiiWare. The game is the latest in a series of reimagining of some of their classic games, such as Contra and Gradius. The game is essentially a remake of Castlevania the Adventure, retelling Christopher Belmondo's first battle against Draculia. The game takes stylistic clues from the original Game Boy game, but is very much a new experience. In America, it's known as Castlevania The Adventure Rebirth. As for the future of the series, a teaser trailer for a new game featuring Alucard has appeared, though the title and nature of the game was never released, and as of now, it's unknown if the game will ever be released. Sometime after this, a game called Lords of Shadow was rebranded as Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Apparently, they were planning to have it be a part of the series all along, but it was not named so as to not take focus away from Judgment. The game seems to be a reboot of the series, and I haven't seen any sort of different Japanese title at all. The game features a character named Gabriel Belmont and voice actors such as Robert Carlyle, Patrick Stewart, and Jason Isaacs. Lords of Shadow is coming out sometime in 2010 for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. So there you have it. There is the full history of the Draculia series, what we know as the Castlevania series. There are a few other games that are sort of connected, such as a new arcade version, a patch slot, and some satirical games. But for the most part, I've covered everything. I hope you enjoyed this look back at my favorite series, and I hope that you learned a few things here and there. NecroVMX, out.